Greetings, everyone on Facebook. Let me go ahead and cue these live, and then we will begin the show. Don't go anywhere. I'm still queuing. Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. the Ganji doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Blasting News and Wits News. That's where I've been writing lately. If you are one of the people that are familiar with me, hello, Howard, who are familiar with me uh, via Blasting News, do make sure you check out the new article I have up on Babylon Shakes. Just type in Babylon Shakes Blasting News. It will come right up. Um, regular viewers will know that I was uh, lucky enough to attend that show uh, that they had at High Vol Fest. How would you know that? Because that's what that poster is. Pay attention. Uh, regular viewers will know I got to, uh, got to see Lola Montez and a bunch of amazing bands there. Well, I did a phone interview. And I got to talk to Chris Clark from Babylon Shakes. And I got an interview up six days after the CD came out. I'm one of the first in the nation, friends. So uh, they are going to be on High Vol Fest next year, the end of next summer. So you've got time to get ready for it. And now that I have allowed everyone to trickle in, and my top camera is trying to fall down from its precarious spot that I have it in, we will get into the massive Fukushima update. And uh, the way I want to begin that this time is with an, I had a discussion, and I want to, I guess I'll, I'm going to go into it, I should say, with a very open mind for the fact that a lot of people tend to find this show who are on the other side of the political spectrum from me in most instances. Um, clearly, there's a problem with federal taxes. And people people aren't always understanding that. So I think that I'd like to say why. Um, if this, the, the government, the federal government, taxes, they can use that money without your say for virtually anything that they want. How many of you were not in favor of the Iraq war? Did you have any say? as to whether or not your tax dollars went to it. That's the problem with federal taxes, and that ties into the Fukushima disaster, because it was the Japanese government working in tandem with um, the U.S. government and the General Electric Corporation, who you should never invest in and never be part of the mutual funding. It was they who pretty much forced many local areas in Japan, local to Fukushima, who did not want those nuclear power plants. They forced them to have it. And people far smarter than me predicted quite openly that there, were going, there was going to be an earthquake of the size that they predicted in the time frame that they predicted during the life of the nuclear power plant in Fukushima. Hello, John. State the, the local prefecture there that didn't want it had no say. That's what federal taxes do. And many people, such as myself, who are more libertarian-leaning, were against taxes on the federal level for these very sorts of reasons. Um, the Constitution, very wisely, at least in America, I know people tend to get this show in Japan and the EU and that, but most free societies for that have constitutions set up something like ours is in America, that which isn't outlined by the Constitution is a job that is left to the states, not the federal government. That way, the states are able to protect themselves in ways that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do because of the local say on the local level. So you could argue quite vigorously, I guess, that if they wanted to institute some kind of a universal health care system within a state, if the people in the state voted for it, you could make some argument that that would be legal. Now, I know that there's other libertarians who would disagree with that. But 
universally putting the federal government in charge of these sorts of things are the exact wrong way to go. And I think the Fukushima disaster spells that out wonderfully. It does an excellent job of highlighting that truth. And there are a number of people now that since wiser minds were not listened to, they really don't know what they're going to do when it comes time to fix that. And a lot of people have gone and said things like, something has to be done, nothing's being done in Fukushima. I want to give a shout out here to Fukushima Exposed. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. There's an image, I can go to screen share for those of you who are on media speaks on YouTube and if you're not make sure you subscribe uh, for those of you watching on Facebook I will uh, go ahead and post it as a screenshot after the show is over so just come back look at this there's an image of a nuclear worker in a white uniform black boots orange hat he has the respirator mask on and he's wearing uh, what look like black patches on his clothes and other people's patches are not closed it almost looks like tape it's important this is what fukushima exposed wrote just an interesting side note that very few know do you see these black patches on the workers overhauls whites these are radiation exposure dosage units the ones that are walking around in the black are literally walking dead men those patches are showing that they are well past their maximum lifetime dosage limit, so it changes color as the radiation accumulates. So please do excuse me when I seem to get a little bit bitter and snappy with people in the comments when I do bother even reading them who say that nothing is being done. These men are done and have been giving everything that they have to give. Now, that is something that I don't want to overlook. That is probably one of the most devastating truths that you're going to get on this show or anywhere else. But at the same time, I want to clarify what, what is I think a lot of people mean when they say that nothing is being done. Um, the Fukushima disaster would simply never have happened if the nuke industry had not been allowed, in part by federal governments, had not been allowed to put nuclear power plants in areas where there was major risk of a seismic event. It was predicted mathematically within what 10-year time period it would fall in, and it did. Now that we can't even get close to the nuclear fuel. They can't even send people in to move it. It's so radioactive. Since robots and any mechanical creation that mankind comes up with cannot get near the nuclear power plant. Nothing is being done is something that is said because where we are now as a people, nothing can be done. Why? Because governments chose to cater to the nuke industry, the bottom dollar, all of that, instead of doing the right thing. And I mean, we're, li we're living in exactly what that means now. Here is End of American Dream, Michael Snyder, an amazing writer. Is it the beginning? Ten significant earthquakes rock the California coastline as Mount St. Helens rumbles back to life. Now, let me explain something here briefly. I, on this show, have been quoting people, again, smarter than I am, who have been predicting the number of earthquakes to dramatically rise. They listed where they would dramatically rise at and were largely ignored. Scoffed at, laughed at, hey, Mark, hey, Liz. Now, what are we seeing? All of these voices, friends, were proven right. Again, I'm going to go screen share for my media speakers. Happy to have you guys with me. Scientists tell us that someday the big one will strike California and large portions of the coastline will plunge into the ocean almost instantly, Michael Snyder. Could it be possible that we are a lot closer to that day than many have anticipated? Over the past several days, there has been a lot of shaking along the North American portion of the Ring of Fire. 
in particular. During a 24-hour period over the weekend, one area of the California coastline was hit by 10 earthquakes of at least magnitude 3, and this created such a stir that it made the front page of the Drudge Report. The following comes from the California newspaper as well, the uh, San Francisco Gate. So you've got the Drudge Report and SF Gate, uh, according to what the media likes to sell you, that's far left, far right. Ten earthquakes are primarily magnitudes between 3 and 4.5, stuck off the coast of Northern California between Saturday and Sunday, struck. The United States Geological Survey report. Now, this is important because I don't think maybe everyone realizes this, but a 3-point earthquake and a 3.1, that is 10 times worse, not the decimal place that would be implied. It's done on what's called the order of magnitude. So there is a huge difference between a 3.0 and a 4.5, 150 times. You see what I'm saying on the math there? It's not just a little shaky. It's, it's a rather big difference there. Hopefully, all of this shaking will turn out to be nothing, Snyder also wrote. But many are concerned in that they could be potentially foreshocks for a larger event. Once the quake hit early Sunday, they just kept coming one after the other. Again, the uh, SF gate. The first earthquake struck early Saturday morning at a magnitude of 4.3, while the second earthquake of 3.2 magnitude rumbled about 30 minutes later. Three additional quakes hit between 4.30 and 5.38 p.m. In the same area on Saturday, reg registering magnitudes between 2.9 and 3.6. Again, that's a bit of a golf. Um, the USGS reported a 3.0 magnitude earthquake struck that night at 11.37. And then it goes on to say that uh, they continued into Sunday uh, near Petrolia between 2.18 and 4.05 p.m. And uh, ranged from a 3.4 to a 4.5. We're also told by NBC News that the Ring of Mexico uh, has a strong earthquake jolted southern Mexico on Friday rattling nerves, and swaying tall buildings hundreds of miles away. And the, this article goes on and on and on. California is littered with nuclear power plants that need only a mild shaking to become far worse and far deadlier than will be reported in the event that it happens. Just like in Cali, just like in Japan, where the, the, the magnitude of cancers cannot be downplayed, the, the same thing would happen here. It, it, it could be an extinction, extinction event to some degree if this were to hit where these power plants are. And that needs to be understood. That's not an overstatement. He mentions as well that Mount St. Helens has been very, very active. And um, Express CO, that's in the United Kingdom, since 1980, the area around the volcano has experienced tens of thousands of small quakes and numerous minor eruptions. Most notably, as of 2004, Mount St. Helens has been continuously erupting lava, which has created a large dome that is now taller than the Empire State Building. It grows by five meters per day. Mount Rainier is even worse than Mount St. Helens. There's a warning on that uh, from his book, Michael Snyder's book. You can get it on Amazon. I know that there are a lot of people out there who plan to leave the West Coast once things are getting really crazy, he wrote. But when it comes to major seismic events, you might not have any warning at all. So this ties in with great importance to what's, uh, what I'm doing here with the Fukushima update because these it's important to understand that the quake triggered one of the meltdowns prior to the tidal wave hitting Fukushima, which means that just a quake is enough to cause these sorts of things. And if there's tidal wave risks near California, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that the same thing that happened in Japan could happen here. I got this here from uh, cleantechnica.com. IAEA urges patience for Fukushima nuclear cleanup. Yeah, patience. Meanwhile, they're being juiced at levels that 
are nothing short of toxic. The levels which were deemed safe were just lowered so that, or raised, depending on how you want to look at it, so that more radiation could be allowed into the environment, into food, into water, into materials that are traded across borders. Some of it's not even tested. And if it is, it's not tested properly for enough of the radionuclides. But just be patient while you're getting juiced by power plants that we should have never built because people told us not to. Who were brilliant. The International Atomic Energy Agency completed its fourth review mission in November of Japan's efforts in decommissioning the cleanup of Fukushima. I'm going to skip around and saying we all know what happened. The disaster wiped off the plant. We know that. I'm skipping that. Given the severity of the challenges faced from the outset of the accident, one can only be impressed by the dedication and the achievements of the people involved said team leader Christopher Ziri, director of the IAEA's Division of Nuclear Fuel Cycle and Waste Technology. In November, he said, despite these achievements, many challenges remain to be tackled in the decommissioning process and ensuing safety in this complex situation. This is ridiculous. This is like taking a, a firecracker, or a, I'm sorry, a Roman candle in your house and reading the instructions, and it says that it shoots flaming balls. You then shoot it at your mattress and it burned, it's burning your house now. But you manage to get the fire at least out a little bit in the hallway while the rest of the house burns down. And people are congratulating you on what a good job you've done because you've been dedicated to saving the house. Maybe if you hadn't lit the Roman candle, maybe if you hadn't built the nuclear power plant on the coastline, maybe if you hadn't used nuclear technology at all due to the fears that have been well-founded and well-documented in science since the atom was discovered, this wouldn't have happened. So therefore, maybe there's a better than average chance that we're not praising your cleanup efforts. This is from uh, a report called the International Peer Review Mission on Long, on Mid and Long Term Roadmap Towards Decommissioning of TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station, longest name ever. That significant progress has already been accomplished to move Fukushima Daiichi from an emergency situation into a stabilized one. Yeah, that's why cancers are skyrocketing, right? That explains why thyroid problems are skyrocketing. That explains why the most toxic food in the whole world comes from Japan, right? That the only place that can touch the toxicity is near Russia and uh, near the Mavec plant, right? Mavec, another genius uh, development from humankind. They're trying to determine an end game for advanced liquid processing system. It's ELPS. It was made in France, of course, but it can't get rid of tritium. And tritium adheres to water like Elmer's glue does to fingers. They can't get it out. And of course, the water is accumulating and leaking into the ocean every day. And they're talking about just dumping what they already have. They didn't build the containment vessels for the water, right? So when they're putting the water from the plant, which is now toxic, into containers, some of them are not even don't even have the proper sealing. TEPCO should ensure that appropriate containers and storage capacity are available before starting the fuel debris re re retrieval. So in eight years, we haven't even been able to get that done. We can't even get the containers there. The Associated Press, for those of you that say that I don't give sources, I don't want to hear it today, recently quoted, I always do, by the way, Dale Clean, former U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission chairman who leads a TEPCO reform committee, saying in a recent interview that the Fukushima Daiichi decommissioning should not be rushed despite the desire to wrap it up as quickly as possible. It's much better to do it right and to do it fast. And they can't do it at all because they can't get near it. Clearly, the longer we wait, the less the radiation is. Yeah, no, that's not. That's only true with certain radioactive elements. So as a blanket term, that BS statement is true because some of them do die out quickly. Uranium, plutonium, they last for millions of years, just as toxic a million years from now as it is today. Contaminating everything it touches. If you dig up a corpse that was killed in the bombing of Japan, dig them up, they are just as radioactive now as they were then. 
uranium, plutonium, still there as deadly, as strong as before. So what he's saying is obfuscation. Friends. It's not entirely true, which is why you tune into this show. Uh, this is world world nuclear news. Uh, before we get to the dumb of the day, and I want to remind you that this is listener supported. So please donate to the show if you can. I implore you, please. I'm having some trouble getting things mailed out and things because of the new algorithm changes. So sharing helps. And if you can donate, please do at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The correct views at hotmail.com. Um, IAEA reports on progress at Fuku. Uh, here we go. Um, some of this repeats, but not all of it. So I, I did want to mention this. Um, they were there from the 5th to the 13th of November when they were analyzing the supposed progress that's been made. And it says, uh, addressing the situation of the damaged plants at Fukushima Daiichi and moving towards decommissioning while ensuring the safety of the workers in the population has remained very challenging. Now, they haven't done so. As you can tell by the black nuclear radiation detection uh, patches that I reported on when I opened the show. The risk reduction strategy is being implemented at a pace commensurate with the challenge of the site-specific situation. In other words, they're winging it and hoping for the best because they are in uncharted territories. Listen to the sentence. The risk reduction strategy is being implemented at a pace commensurate with the challenges of the site-specific situation. This is a disaster of unprecedented scope, and they have nothing to deal with it, even remotely when it comes to getting near the plant, the, uh, the cores. They don't even know where some of the core is. Well, significant progress has been achieved in estimation of fuel debris distribution inside the reactor buildings of 1 and 3, there is recognition that more must be done. Considering that the entire Pacific Ocean is seeing a die-off as never seen before, I would personally be one to consider that a bit of an understatement. Considering the challenges ahead towards the safe decommission of the state, of the site, the IAEA review team encourages Japan to further strengthen program and project management and related organizational structure for comprehensive and integrated planning for the completion of the site decommissioning. None of that can be done because the technology to do so simply does not exist. They need either new technology or a magician. The team said that the issue of water management is critical to the sustainability of decommissioning activities. Yes, since they want to pour it into the ocean, Lastly, the team said the implementation of a safe decommissioning of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station is unique and complex. That was told to you before you built it. And that, friends, brings us to the dumb of the day. Oh, yeah. How many of you... How many of you remember that you were given... A warning by many people, including yours truly, that you were going to see the problem and deform much sooner. Not just cancers, but genetic deformities of all varieties, much sooner than you expected. Within a couple of years, there were an uptick in rabbits born with no ears. There was an uptick in thyroid problems, thyroid cancers, heart issues. People were catching colds more frequently. Everything that can possibly attack the immune system and, and or the genetic structure of the body was seen almost immediately. Well, you're not going to see horrible deformities. All right, well, let, you know, let's see what we're seeing here. This is from the sun. Godzilla, how monster, quote, Godzilla wolfish of Fukushima, five times larger than normal, emerged after the Japanese nuclear disaster. Mutant beasts, more than one, which have been spotted in the years since the shocking tragedy. So, oh, it's just a fluke, Sam. This happens sometimes. No, it doesn't. Not in these numbers. It's never happened before in all of recorded history. Monster fish with jaws big enough to swallow a child have been found lurking in the waters up the coast of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Again, I'll post a picture of this on Facebook as well. Twice its normal size, one prehistoric-looking wolfish was even caught by a professional fish hunter 
after he went looking for one of the giants. Hirasaka Hiroshi reeled in the monstrous creature during the trip to Hakiedo, Japanese second largest island near eastern Russia. Normally, the deep sea species grow up to three feet in length, but the horror Harishi landed was more than six feet long and weighed five times more than usual. His Twitter profile states, quote, I live for chasing interesting creatures, and reveals that he has written a book called Exotic Fish Species I Caught, Judged, and Tried Eating. That's just brilliant. Don't. Darwinism in action. It was worth flying to Hokkaido twice within three months. This guy is super cool, the fisherman posted on Twitter. Yeah, because deformities are awesome. As they climb right up that food chain. Because of the sheer size of the catch, many locals believe the sea beast could be a result of fallout from the disaster, but scientists say it would be very it could be very old. It could also be deformed from its age. You get deformed at once you do you don't Deformities don't have to take place at birth with radiation altering DNA levels, uh, altering DNA structures and levels of vital proteins in the body. He said it's like Godzilla, and there are theories are backed by the fact that giant catfish were also discovered near uh, Chernobyl in the Ukraine. So we've seen this before. At that disaster site, the fish had grown to the record size, even though divers who entered the toxic waters after the disaster suffered lethal radiation sickness and had to be buried in lead coffins, which is exactly what we saw with the uh, geniuses who went ahead and uh, so brilliantly managed to poison most of the world with the uh, trying to recycle the radiation machine, if any of the X-ray machine. For those of you who remember that story. Attacked locals. Some feared it was a mutant born after radioactive waste was dumped in the lake by a nearby chemical vacuum. It's said to have tried to bite a number of people who had hopped, hopped in for a closer look at the freaky fish. So it's aggressive, something else not usually seen in wolf fish. And very, very few mutations lead to extra, li extra large size. I said a University of South Carolina radiation specialist, Timothy Masu. You also don't see these levels of radiation normally either, particularly when most of them are being hidden to begin with. So you're getting truncated data and false data to start with. Instead, they grow less efficiently. If you look hard and long enough, there's always a few that manage to survive. Yeah. And that's going to get worse and worse as this disaster carries on, and we have absolutely no way to fix it whatsoever. That, friends, is your massive Fukushima update. Thank you for listening, friends, and please donate if you can to correct views at hotmail.com. I'll be doing the dust cap of the month soon. I'm still trying to mail out the last one, so please donate your funds. Help you out.